Today's PortTrigger tutorial is entitled Remote Code Execution via Web Shell Upload. To solve the lab, we must exfiltrate the contents of the file slash home slash carlos slash secret by using a basic PHP Web Shell. First off, let's access the lab and log in as winner with the password Peter. We know from the lab description that we are looking for a vulnerable image upload function. To test for this, upload an avatar image. I chose a minion just because the new Despicable Me is coming out soon and I just love watching cartoons. We are redirected to the slash avatar page. When clicking the back to my account link, we can see that a preview of the image is now available inside of our account. Now go to burp proxy http history and look for the my account avatar request. Send this request to repeater. We also want to see the request that returns the content of our image. For this, we need to filter the requests. Go to Filter Settings at the top of the Requests list and click it. We want to select images from the Filter by MIME type section. Click Apply and Close to close the window. We can now see a GET request for files avatar, your image name, in my case minion.png. As you can see, this request returns the content of our image. Send this request to repeater as well. Let's just send both of the requests again to make sure everything works as intended. The first request is OK, the file has been uploaded, and the second request returns the content of the file. This is good. Now, we know from the lab description that the web server is configured to use PHP for server-side scripting. We would normally find this out by testing for information disclosure, so looking for error messages, backup files, file extensions, code comments, and so on. As a last resort, if we cannot find the server-side programming language used, we would just need to test for the most common ones, such as Java, Python, Node, and so on. Anyway, we know that we are working with PHP, so let's just try changing the image's file extension from .png to .php. We get a 200 OK response again. It looks like our file has been uploaded, which means that the server doesn't have any filters put in place to restrict extensions like .php. Furthermore, it does not validate the uploaded file against its MIME type and it's unbothered by the fact that the file contains invalid PHP code. Now, if the web server is configured to process files with a PHP extension using the PHP interpreter, which is typically the case for servers running PHP, then our uploaded PHP file should be executed by the server. Let's check for this by changing the content of the file to some PHP code. I'll say angle bracket question mark php echo hello question mark angle bracket. Now go to the other request and also change the extension from png to php to see what we've just uploaded. As you can see, our code has been executed. Now we can use a nice web shell to execute arbitrary system commands. We will be using the system command as shown in the port swigger documentation, system get command. Keep in mind that the system function executes the specified command and prints it directly to the web page. It also returns the last line of the output, so using the echo statement will result in the last line being printed twice. Now go to the request for the PHP file and pass a command via the command query parameter like so, question mark command equals who am I? It looks like the current user is Carlos. Now we can do whatever we want, such as display system information, uname minus a, display the contents of different files such as the password file, cat slash etsy password, or the contents of the file we are interested in for solving the lab, slash home, slash carlos, slash secret. We have found the secret. Copy it, go back to the lab and submit the answer. The lab is solved. This is it for today's tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye!